2019 came with three significant losses. All three were the kind of loss that sits in your body and takes years to process and metabolize. You know, those kinds of losses that change you forever. Typically, when such loss occurs, one hopes for distraction. Being busy and distracted can commonly be an effective way to wade through the hardest times. But I got the opposite. While 2020 meant a year of chaos and unusual busyness for some, I found myself in a year of forced stillness. Having just moved to a different state and with only two of my four children at home, the pandemic placed me in the center of unwanted space and silence. Amidst the silence and to balance out the three losses, the universe blessed me with three significant daily graces. Two of those graces thankfully remain. One is my daily marathon walk, which is one of the reasons I look like an honorary cast member of the docudrama, Some Kind of Heaven. That Utah sun will get you. And if you haven't watched Some Kind of Heaven, you should. And two, practicing the piano. Before COVID, I had taught a lot, but I had not practiced the piano regularly for 20 years. That was since I was zero. Finding myself with some extra time and with some encouragement from a friend who was just interested in hearing me play, I found myself reacquainted with practicing the piano. Come to find out, practicing for my own pleasure centers me and results in kisses from my husband, daily shout outs from my son. Mom, I love your piano music. He says it every day. And companionship from my puppy. Ding, ding. Um, I had just gotten back into practicing when Heidi mentioned me in a Facebook post and asked if I wanted to participate in this project. I quickly and enthusiastically said, yes. I love Heidi. I played with her 25 years ago and it was super fun then and super fun now. Plus, I get to call her your honor, which is totally baller and no surprise. Uh, I love chamber music. I love it. It's my favorite thing to play. I love it because it's some of the best music and I love playing with other people. Uh, this project has brought me so much happiness and maybe a few instances of illicit swearing. Proms is hard, yo. <laughs> it is frustrating. Also gorgeous. Um, and I've loved interacting with my fellow quintet members and I have loved practicing. So thanks team and especially thanks to Emily for organizing this project and for the hours she has spent editing and putting it all together. We know it is kind of a miracle. Hello, I'm Heidi Dyfel. I play a second violin in this chamber group. I have really enjoyed making this music with my friends um, during this pandemic. It's been very difficult to not have a collaborative place to make music together and um, this project has really helped fill a void for me during the pandemic of creating beautiful music. I am totally obsessed with Brahms, have been forever and this piece in particular. So to find friends to play this with me was amazing, especially friends that have been my friends since Brigham Young University many moons ago when we were all music majors. Haley I had never met, but obviously she's brilliant and it was fun to play with her. The obstacles in making this project for me were many. Um, when I, After I finished uh, my bachelor's at BYU, I suffered a career ending arm injury and I had to find another thing to do. So I went to law school and um, I, during law school, I was finally diagnosed with um, radial tunnel uh, syndrome and got surgery, so I was restored back to being able to play again. Um, so that's that was obstacle number one, was I couldn't play for so many years, um, but I'm back to playing now. And also I have, during the pandemic, it was difficult for us to make this recording because I have two children who are distance learning during this time, and I had to help them with that in addition to my busy law practice, and my husband has his own physical therapy practice. So. 
um, it was busy and hard to find the time to self-isolate in as uh, soundproof environment as I possibly could. And I not only that, but I had like a mental block on doing these recordings. Like uh, I, I just love the piece so much and I wasn't playing as much during the pandemic. And so it was, I wanted I wanted it to be perfect. And so that created like a mental block on, on, on performing this piece. But I am so grateful that we did it. Um, it really fed my soul and helped my creative soul not die during the pandemic. Um, chamber music for me is the most nutritive um, thing for my for my musical side. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching you four people who <laughs> watch this video. And thanks to my friends for making this incredible music. For many of us in the music world, COVID flipped things upside down. We suddenly went from being able to do everything that we were used to in person to having to figure out ways to do them online. I had to figure out, as many people did, how to teach violin and viola students online, how to work from home online as a uh, private school uh, admin assistant and a music teacher at the school. Uh, I, I had to juggle trying to figure out how to perform as a musician gigs were suddenly gone and the world just seemed like a different and lonely place. And many people started reaching out to each other in the music world about collaborating through uh, technology to be able to still perform, to still be able to, to teach, to still be able to connect as we do as musicians. And it became very clear that this group was a very special group that all of us uh, with our busy lives and suddenly thrust into being at home 100% of the time for much of this pandemic. Um, it was a group that came together and wanted to still provide a beautiful and wonderful outlet to per perform together. And um, this process was much longer than we anticipated between um, just my personal behind the scenes. I was often um, teaching my lessons on Zoom to my violin students and my viola students, changing my clothes really quickly <laughs> and finding a little minute here or a minute there to record myself in what was amazingly a, a moment of quiet in a house with five children and um, my husband working from home. So those were some of the challenges that we faced. We're trying to find peace and quiet and um, fit it in with everything else that was happening online. The um, other side was that uh, I had a senior in high school and I had just sent my oldest off to college and he is now on a mission for our church. And when we started this project, he was still a senior in high school, <laughs> finishing up his senior year in 2020 as part of that graduating COVID class. I also caught COVID, which uh, delayed me being able to perform and practice and record myself for this video. My dog was um, in an, an attack and we were nursing him back to health for several days and luckily he's fine. And then of course, juggling all of the children's needs and trying to be there for the family and trying to do my job um, for the school. All of those things kind of were an interesting dynamic in um, my ability to find time to record and perform this piece. I, am, I have loved being able to do it. I have loved connecting with old friends and new friends um, within this group and feel it was a great blessing to be able to do something like this during a pandemic. And I really hope I can perform with them in person someday because it's been a really special experience and I've been very thankful for it. has this Brahms project meant to me? Um, that's a good question. When COVID shut everything down, I found myself, uh, as we all did, having every aspect of my life changed and disrupted. 
my children's schooling was disrupted, my career was disrupted, my husband's business was shut down, um, going to church, going grocery shopping, running errands, um, every interaction with all my neighbors was stopped. And, you know, we all experienced this worldwide. It wasn't something unique to me by any stretch of the imagination. But one of the things that was hardest to face was the lack of camaraderie and the joy, I'm missing the joy that I feel when I make music with my peers. Music for me isn't just an occupation. It's part of who I am. I thrive on that collaboration and the emotion that is felt collectively when I mu make music with other people. As a cellist, I don't play all by myself very often. I play in symphonies and I play in chamber groups and um, that is where I find joy and fulfillment most readily. So this project gave me an opportunity to collaborate with dear friends and new friends on a piece which I love and is dear to me as one of the first pieces I studied in, in college actually um, with a chamber coach. So I found myself able to spend time, though remotely, with other like-minded, wonderful people creating something together. And that is something that was missing in my life. And I felt that I mourned it, the, the absence of this, this collaboration. And um, so for me, this project gave me back a little piece of my life, where actually I should say a big piece of my life that was gone because of COVID. It didn't come without challenges. Like the others in the group, I have children and all of a sudden they were at home all the time. And finding times to practice and record in a house full of people that are noisy. And, and that was probably my biggest challenge. Finding the time to sit in quiet and just get the recording done without German class in the background or math class in the background or any of these other distractions and things going on. So I'm really grateful to Emily for heading this project up. I'm grateful to Heidi and Haley and Christy for their work on this project. And I have truly enjoyed working with them and getting to know them um, over distance, at least Haley and Christy. Um, Heidi and Emily have been good friends since college. So um, I hope that answers the question and I hope you enjoy the end result. What I've enjoyed most about this project has been collaborating with my friends and watching their performances as I spent so many hours in the editing room. Each member of this group is so devoted to the love they have for their instrument, the love they have for making music in general, and this truly inspired repertoire. It really comes through in their performance, despite the fact that at the time of performance, their audience was a mere camera and microphone, and even sometimes a lowly smartphone. My favorite scene is at about nine minutes, 16 seconds, where you can see a big smile come across Heidi's face as she is listening to the rest of us in her ear. I love that because you can just feel how much joy she derives from the sheer beauty of the music. I've also loved watching Christy play the piano hour after hour in the editing room and felt so much admiration and awe at her ability. She is truly an amazing and brilliant pianist. Probably the two biggest challenges for me throughout this project have been one, learning my way around audio engineering and two, just finding time to do the video editing.
So I still have much to learn when it comes to editing and music production, but little by little with each project, I increase in understanding <laughs> and skill. If you go back and view my videos uh, from the beginning, starting from the Lover's Waltz, it's actually a very sequential display of my process of learning video production. And with this project, the Brahms being such an iconic piece, I really wanted to do everything I could to increase the production value of specifically the audio track. So I got started learning what I could with the um, audio engineering side of things and experimenting with the software that I currently have. Then I sent the tracks to two different audio engineers to see what they could do with them and what I might be able to learn from the process of working with professionals. As it turns out, the amateur quality of our capture was rather troubling to the professionals. <laughs> and in the end, it seemed to be a choice between finding the perfect balance or including all the fancy engineering tools like panning and EQ plugins and reverb and all of that. And so ultimately, the choice was made in favor of just retaining control of the balance for myself. Uh, in the end, I sent two different iterations of the audio track to my colleagues. One had been professionally engineered and one had been engineered by me. Um, my colleagues ended up picking the one that I had made. And so that is the track that is in our video. To a professional, it may sound rather raw and with plenty of flaws, but I'm actually happy with it because it signifies the things that I have learned in this journey, um, specifically with regard to audio engineering. Uh, I don't claim to be competent by any stretch of the imagination or good at it, but for me, this is the very beginning of the journey.